So the topic for today is the musical scale. And what exactly is a scale? Simply put, a scale is a series of pitches that are organized ascending, that means going from low to high, or descending from high to low. And this scale is used to create our music. Just imagine a painter and a painter has a palette of colors and on this palette he has three colors. Let's say red, blue, yellow. And from this palette he's limited to creating a work of art. Now he can use the red and fill the whole board with red and then in a corner, you could put a little dash of yellow and then he could decide, maybe let's mix it up and put the red and yellow together and he gets a tinge of orange or he could just go red, yellow, red, yellow, streaks of lines. But no matter what he does, he utilizes this palette of colors. Similarly, this is what a scale is in music. We have, for want of a better word, a palette of pitches and we use these pitches to create our sounds so we're gonna look at one of the smallest I will call it a cell of notes which is a mini scale for music and this is called a tetrachord a tetrachord is a scale that contains only four pitches it's important to note that when you're creating any form of scale, and in this case, I'm going to use a tetrachord, that the beginning note or whatever pitch you choose to begin your scale on gives the name or that's the scale is labeled with that letter. So for the sake of demonstrating, I'm going to write a tetrachord that begins on D. Now the very first step, and you could apply this to any scale when you're building, because all scales follow a very specific formula that belongs to that scale that you're making. And in the case of a tetrachord, we're going to learn what that formula is in a short while. So I'm going to begin on D. And the very first step that you will do when you're creating a skill is figure out what your palette of pitches are going to be. So with your skill, you're going to find your starting letter or your starting pitch, D. And with the tetrachord, after you write your first pitch, you're going to follow it with three other pitches that follows the alphabet after D. So the next pitch will begin with E, and the next pitch will be F, and then G. In a scale, you do not repeat letters. So if I have D, my next note will not be a D sharp or a D flat. You have to go on to the next letter. So that's the very first rule I'm going to give you to hold when you are creating your scales. So here I have D, E, F, G. Now this, you would think, oh, I've created a scale. And maybe you did, but this is not a tetrachord. And I'm going to write a corresponding pitch. I'm going to put it on my stave, D, E, F and then G. All right. So notice when you're building your scale, I started on a space and then I go up to the next line. Then I go up to the next space and then I go up to the next line. So it alternates. There's no skipping. I didn't go all the way up to this E, this F. When you're writing your scale, do not skip. Go to the very next pitch on the stave. 
that is part of your lettering because it's a series of notes that's, that are organized. I'm using Tetrachord. It's a very good skill to do your demo on. So we have D, E, F, G. Now, according to the scale that you're using, there's a very specific formula that you apply to the scale. Now, in the case of the Tetrachord, the formula is tone, tone, semitone. Tone, tone, semitone. And what do I mean by that? When you're creating your tetrachord for it to be precise, they want that the distance between the first and the second note to be a tone. And then they want the distance between the second and your third note to be a tone. And then for your last two pitches, they expect it to be a semitone. And once you fulfill all these needs of your tetrachord, that you have your alphabet orders beginning on your first note, D, E, F, G, and that the distance between the first two pitches is a tone and the second and third is a tone, and the last two is a semitone, then you have a tetrachord. I don't know if I made mention that your scale is always named after the letter or the pitch that you begin with. So in this case, we are trying or attempting to build a D tetrachord. So let's go and see if this fulfills the formula. And just to remind you what a tone or a semitone is, the distance between two notes is called an interval. The very smallest interval we have in Western music is the semitone. What is a semitone? Say, for instance, I am looking at this note B on the piano. The semitone is any note that is immediately next to it. C is immediately next to the B. So that's a semitone higher. And B flat is immediately next to it so that's a semitone lower in this case we are going from low to high so we'll be going in uh, this direction if you're using your keyboard as your guide so that's what a semitone is and a tone is when you're two semitones away from the note so here i am on b and i want a tone then i will just hop here and then hop here. And this note is two semitones apart from my B. So this is called a tone. So B to C, then C to C sharp. C sharp is a tone away from B. All right, so now that we remember how to get the distance using tone and semitone, let's see if we can get that distance our tetrachord or the letters here to follow this formula. So between D and E, I require tone. And we could use the letter T just to remind us it's supposed to be a tone. And I go on my keyboard, my convenient keyboard, and here I'm on D. And the next letter is E. And now I want to see if that distance is a tone away. So here I'm on D and it goes here for the semitone and then it comes here for another semitone. So it's indeed a tone away. So the very first two pitches do follow my tetrachord and we are living life nicely. Now here we are going to see if the, let's tick this just so we wouldn't redo it. And we want to know if between E and F, the pitches E and F, do we have a, a tone? We need to get a tone. So I'm going to put T here for tone. Just to remind me. So I'm going to just use this E here. It doesn't matter which E on the piano. And it goes to F. All right. So we already encountered a problem here. This distance here is not a tone. It's not a tone. For it to be a tone, it should be up here. So what do we do? 
we discover what the note that is a tone away from the ears and we re recognize that it's actually f sharp f sharp now you have to use the letters the very first step is to put the letters you have here so don't go put in changing this and say okay that's g flat use the letters always put the letters first and then uh, manipulate you could just put a sharp or a flat according and in this case since i have to use f this will be an f sharp f sharp oh maybe i should change the color yes let's change the color so it will blend in with the letters ah got a better idea let's go right back here and use my number sign for the f sharp <laughs> good so between e and f sharp i do have a tone so i can safely take off the second part and finally, for my texture chord to be complete, I need to get a semitone, a semitone between the last two pitches. So I'm on F sharp now, and the note it goes to is G, which is right here. And it is indeed a semitone apart. It's right next to it. So here we do have a semitone, and we'll put S. T T S. That's the musical formula, and I should have been doing the piano, but it's no biggie. So we have the D, yes. We have the E, uh huh. We do not have the F sharp. So let's just take the sharp sign, put it in front here. Now we have the F sharp, and then finally we have the G. So let's play the tetrachord and see what a D tetrachord starts sounds like. And for those who have done Western music, you may find that this song's familiar as he No rain me fa. So the tetrachord has that do re mi fa song. And if you not too familiar with it, I have no fear. We're gonna do that a little later on when we do solfages. Let's try a another scale another tetrachord we're gonna try another tetrachord and i will look at an e flat tetrachord e flat so it means that my beginning note will be an e flat so e and i'll use a comma letter b to represent the flat now the very first rule we learned is that it must be in alpha order alphabetical order so after that letter e we don't know yet what the other exact pitches will be but we do know what letter that pitch will begin with so we have f g and then a so those are the notes we'll be working with so we're gonna put them on our save one time e and we know the beginning note is E flat, so I will just put the flat in front of it as well. So we have E flat. Then we're going to go up to F, which will be in the next space. I'm going to make this a little bigger so you could clearly see it's on the E line, the first line of your save E. Fill up that space properly so the musician will, will not be confused. Then you go up to the next line. Remember, there's no leaps, so you go to this G. And then we want the fourth letter, which is going to be in the space, A. Make it a little bigger. Fill out that space. Make sure the top line and the bottom line of the notes that are between and fills it so here we have the four letters of our tetrachord e f g a now we're not quite done yet because we still need to follow the formula we need to see if between the e and the f is a tone we need to see if between f and g is a tone and if between g and a is the semitone and if we are using the american names it will be whole step between the e and the f a whole step between F and G and then a half step between G and A. So let's go and take a look at that. 
we'll go on our piano keyboard and we are looking at E flat because this is our beginning note, E flat right here. Uh, yes, and we want a tone. We want to establish if there's a tone, T tone between the E flat and F. So what note is a tone away? We are here and then we go to the next semitone. So semitone plus semitone is a tone and we did, it's right on the left hand side of the three black keys that is indeed an F. So these first two notes of your tetrachord are correct. E flat, F. E flat, F. All right, now between the F and G, we need to get another tone. So just gonna put T to remind me of my formula. F to G should be a tone. Here we are on F. And we go up semitone, semitone, and yes, indeed, we did get to the pitch G, so that is a tone away, so nothing needs to be altered here. We have the E flat, we have the F, which is a tone away, and then we have the G, which is a tone away. Now, last but not least, between the last two pitches, we need a semitone, and we remember that a semitone needs to be immediately next to the note. So here we are on the G, and we need to get here. This is a semitone away. But the letter we have is A, which is a tone away. So you simply, you cannot change the letter because we need to keep it in alpha order, E, F, G, A. So we simply find the note that is that we name here that begins with the A, and that will actually be A flat. A flat will be the name of that pitch. So I'm going to just put it here. Come on, letter B, sorry. Represent my flat sign. And then I go to my stave and put the flat in the same space in front of the A to show that this is my tetrachord. And this is how you make your tetrachord. It begins on E flat. Okay, and you get that um, do re mi fa. You get that do re mi fa sound that is characteristic of your tetrachord. Just for the fun of it, I will do one more. So we just did the E flat tetrachord. So let's do an E tetrachord. So the very first thing you do is you start with your beginning letter which will be an E, you go alphabet, C alphabet, F, C alphabet, G, after that is A. Same letters that we had in the previous scale, but obviously it will be different because instead of beginning with E flat, we're going to begin with E. We call it pop formula. The formula is TTS, tone, tone, semitone, or whole step, whole step, half step, W, W, H, if you're using the American terms. And we are going to establish if between the first two pitches is a tone. So I'm looking for my E, and this is where E is on the keyboard. And I need to get between these two letters, I need to get a tone. So where is a tone on my keyboard? This is a semitone, this is a semitone. So this pitch here is a tone apart. It's not F but rather it's an F sharp. So I'll just put the number sign next to it conveniently because it looks like a sharp. And there we go. So we are an F sharp. And now we want a tone. I'm just going to put a T here to show that was a tone. And I need to get a tone between the F sharp and the G. So here I am on the F sharp. And the note that is a tone away, I'll go to a semitone. And then I go to a tone is up here. It's not G. This would have been um, the G. But the tone, the distance between, between here is G sharp. So I've got to make that a G sharp. G sharp. Excellent. And now I need to just get the, to follow the formula. Let's put a tone here to show I got a tone between these two. And between the G sharp and the A, for it to be a tetrachord, it needs to be a semitone. 
Here's my G-sharp. Semitone away will take me to here. Precisely on the A. So I don't need to change that letter. And let's put this on the star. I'm going to start with this E up in the space. E. F. G. And A would require that I have a ledger line. I can just put it up in the air there. So the musician wouldn't be able to tell if it's... Oops, that's way too thick. The musician wouldn't be able to tell if that's going to be two ledger lines up, three ledger lines up. So I'm going to just draw a line as if to continue my stay right here. So that because I might... That, that is where my A is going to be. It's going to be on the next line here. Voila. All right. So we have E, F, G, A. And now to make sure that it is the tetrachord, we will have to put the accidentals. F sharp and the accidental G sharp to ensure that, that when the person plays it, you get that do, re, mi, fa, so, do, re, mi, fa, so. Do. Do, re, mi, fa. And there we have it. We have our E tetrachord, which consists of two sharps, an F sharp, and the G sharp. Major scale. The music we listen today are built on mostly one of two scales and one of these scales is the major scale whether you did formal music or not the major scale is so embedded in our psyche that we can tell when something does not song right with a song that wasn't created using the scale or when an error is made so what is this major scale we are talking about? So I'm going to play for you a major scale and you'd hear how familiar this major scale sounds. A major ascending. Descending. So the major scale has that particular song and you may have heard do re mi fa so la ti do descending do ti la so fa mi re do this scale is the palette that is used to create many of the songs that we listen to now so we're going to talk about the major scales, how it's created, and we're going to learn about the formula to create a major scale. In our previous segment of this video, we learned what a tetrachord is. And why do I refer to this? It's because the major scale is basically an extension of the tetrachord. The major scale comprises of two tetrachords. These two tetrachords are separated from each other within the major scale by a tone or a whole step. Now, because a tetrachord has four pitches, it will mean that the major scale comprising of two tetrachords will thus have eight pitches. Our music alphabet consists of seven letters, but the major scale consists of eight. So as a result, the beginning note and the ending note of our major scale is the same letter name. Just like in naming the tetrachord, we use the starting note to convey the name of that tetrachord. 
Similarly, the major scale is named from the beginning and ending letter note. The letters in a E major scale will thus be counting eight, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and ends on A. Now those are not the pitches in the major scale because we will have to apply the formula of two tetrachords separated by a tone to get that major sound. Because a major scale consists of two tetrachords and the formula for tetrachord is tone, tone, semitone, it stands to reason that the formula for major scale will be tone, tone, semitone. And remember, I said that they are separated by a tone or whole step. You would put a tone in between it and then follow it with the formula for another tetrachord, tone, tone, semitone. So all in all, the formula for major scale will be tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, or whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Let's go to the board and demonstrate how to create a major scale using all these points that I just gave. Major scales with shops. So using all the information that was just divulged, we're going to create a major scale. First scale I'm going to do is C major. And the first thing you have to do is start on C. So C. And then remember, when we were doing the tetrachord, we say everything goes in alpha order. C, D, E, F. All right? Now, those will be the first four letters for the first tetrachord. The major scale comprises of two tetrachords. To get into the zone of the second tetrachord, you just simply continue with the alpha order. Put a little space just to show this is the beginning of the second tetrachord of the major scale. So after F, we'll have G, A, B, and C. So I said many times in the notes, the major scale will begin and end on the same letter because the first tetrachord has four letters. The second tetrachord has four letters, but the music alphabet only has seven. So when we reach here on the B, which is the seventh, you will just start over. So the name of the scale we are building is going to be C major, and you can tell it's going to be C major because the beginning and the ending notes are both C. Now to see if this is major, I mean, this is the first step putting it in alpha order, but does it have that major song? To make sure it has the major song, we need to ensure that this is a tetrachord, and for it to be a tetrachord between these notes, between C and D needs to be a tone, between D and E needs to be a tone, and between E and F needs to be a semitone. So let's work out if that is what's happening here. So I get my nifty pencil. So between C and D, I need a tone. And here's C on my piano. And a tone will be semitone plus semitone. You'd find that I'm going a little quicker because uh, we have already established this information. C and D is a tone, so that works. Between D and E, we also need a tone. So we are here in D. And a tone would be semitone away plus semitone. So here we are on E. And this also works. So, so 
D to E, we have our tone. And finally, to see if this is a tetrachord, we need to know if between the E and the F is a semitone. And a semitone is the note that's immediately next to it. This is E. And right next to it, we do have an F. So the first part of the tetrachord is correct. And thus, that will be the first part of your major scale. Tone, tone, semitone between it. And you will notice that there's no sharps, there's no flats. So the one tetrachord that has no accidentals is the C tetrachord. And it would be good to keep it or commit this to memory. So you wouldn't have to work it out each time you're building a scale. Once you say uh, starts with the C, we know it's just going to be C, D, E, F, and fulfill the tetrachord, the needs of the tetrachord. I'm going to start putting the notes on the stave as well. So the first, I'm going to start on middle C, that's why I put out the pencil, and middle C is on a ledger line below the staff. So here we have C. Yes, my ledger line is crooked, but I know you can see it clearly. Then we have D. D will be just up on hanging in the space there. So it goes line space. Then we have E. And this will be followed by an F. F in the space. So let's see if we have that do re mi fa song here. Do re mi fa. Which is the song of a tetrachord? Let's go to the second tetrachord. Now, before we move on to the second tetrachord, we have to establish that between the two tetrachords, there's a tone. Between F and G, we need to have a tone. Before we start working out the formula for this, there's no sense working out the formula for this, and then we realize the space in between the two tetrachord is not a tone. It means we will have to rework the tetrachord formula. So between F and between G, we need a tone. So here we are on F. And we need a tone away, and a tone will away from the F is right here, and it's indeed on the G, so we are safe to go. So G is our the beginning of our second tetrachord of the major scale. So let's go back to this formula, tone, tone, semitone, between G and A, do we have a tone? I'm going to start on this G here. G to A, we indeed have a tone. So I'm going to put T here. You know what, I'm going to put a big gap. In fact, this T is already here. So we do have this tone between the two tetrachords. Now, between A and B, A and B, we have a tone. And you can see that that is indeed a tone. And then between B and C, and a lot of times I say you don't even have to work it out because once you start note and you end the note is the same letter, you should be on the right track. It's supposed to begin an end on the same thing. And if you look, you'd see between B and C is a semitone. So in actuality, there are two tetrachords that have no sharps or flats, the C tetrachord and the G tetrachord. And because the C major is a combination of both those tetrachords, the entire scale of C major will have no sharps and no flats. And a lot of students really, really love that because they don't even have to think about it. So your C tetrachord, no sharps, no flats. Your G tetrachord, no sharps, no flats. And let's see if we have that Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So song starting on a G. So the major scale actually consists of two do re mi fa's songs back to back, separated by a tone. Do re mi fa, do re mi fa. But the second half, because of where it is, it's in the middle. We gave it so la ti do. Do re mi fa, so la ti do. 
and descending, which means going from the higher pitch all the way back to T plus so for me, Rado. So that's your major song. Right, so let's put the rest of the scale on our stave G. And you'll notice no line or space is being skipped. So after this line, I'll go up to the A. Duplicate this. We go up to this line B. And then it will end in the space C. And this is what a C major scale will look like. If it begins on the middle C, no sharps or flats are required. All right, let's move on to another tetrachord. I'm going to begin with this G tetrachord. I'm going to start the G major scales. And I already know that this tetrachord is correct, G, A, B, C. So let's begin on that in the text box. a little longer i'm gonna start on the tet second tetrachord of the last scale g a b c and now i continue d e f g beginning and ending notes are the same letters so we know we are building a g major scale i'm not gonna work out the g a b c because as we saw in the c major the g tetrachord actually consists of the g a b c what I'm going to do is start on the second half. But before I begin the second half, I have to establish if the distance between the first tetrachord of the G major scale and the second tetrachord, if the distance between it is a tone. So the last note of this first tetrachord is a C. So C on my keyboard will be here. And I use the keyboard because it's easier to visualize if it's a tone apart. And a tone from C takes me to this note here, which is indeed the D. So my second tetrachord will begin on the D. And I need to know, I'm going to see if this half of the tetrachord fulfills the formula. So between D and E, I need a tone. And this is D and this is E. And indeed, I do have a tone. So that is great. And between E and F, I need a tone and that is not happening. This is a semitone right here. It's right next to each other. I need to carry it here. So all I need to do is make the F and F sharp. I will type in using my palm sign because it's so convenient. F sharp. So between E and F sharp, I do have a tone. Let's stick it in here, tone. And here we have a tone. And like I said before, it, you don't really have to work out if this is going to be a semitone because once it begins and ends on the same letter, it should be correct. It will be correct because the starting and ending letters are the same. But just for the sake of checking it out, this is F sharp. And right next to it is a G. That's a semitone. So now we have been introduced to a second tetrachord and eventually this will become uh, like second nature. You'd know a D tetrachord has one sharp, it has an F sharp. And because the D tetrachord has an F sharp, your entire G major scale will have an F sharp. Um, let's put it on a save to see what a G major scale will look like. G and you start on the line. And you know what? Let's just fill all the way up. Eight notes, two. Don't skip a line, don't skip a space, and you'll be correct. Even though you're not familiar with your naming of your notes, once you do it meticulously like this, you will be correct. Just need to find your beginning notes, and you will be safe to go. This is my seventh note. And my eighth note, I'll just grab one from here. She cleared this out of the way so it won't be too confusing. And sit this on the line. All right, so now we have eight notes alternating your lines and spaces. So we need an F sharp on the second to last note. 
And you know you'd see start to see that pattern happening where you shop in the second to last note when you're building these scales. So G major has an F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Let's play it. So I like to start with the second tetrachord when I'm building my scales. I like to start with the second tetrachord um, to start my new scale because eventually you'll notice when you start with the second tetrachord, you just have to add one more sharp. So I'll show you that. D, E, F sharp, G, that's my next scale that I am going to build. There we go. D, E, and we know this, the D tetrachord has an F sharp, G, and you continue with the alphabet to carry you into the second tetrachord, A, B, C, D. Now the pattern is, and this is just a little trick, if you start on the second tetrachord of the previous scale, then the next tetrachord that you add, you'll just have to raise the second to last note. But let's see if that's true. All right, so D, E, F sharp, G, we know that is going to be correct because we worked it out before. And to begin the second tetrachord, let's see if the last note of this tetrachord and the first note of the second tetrachord of your D major scale is a tone apart. So we find G on the keyboard, and this is A, and they are indeed a tone apart, so it's safe to begin working out if the A tetrachord, which is the second tetrachord of your D major scale, if it follows the formula. So between A and B, I need a tone, and does that happen? Yes, it does. A to B, we do have a tone, so we're good. Between B and C, we need a tone. This is B, and if you look, you'd see the C is immediately next to it. So it's rather semitone, so that C needs to be pushed up here to become C sharp. So let's just put a sharp there, and like I said, usually if you follow this pattern, you'd see that you just have to raise the second to last note, C sharp, and then you don't need, even need to check the last one because because it begins and ends with the same letter. But here we have C sharp, and here we have D. It is indeed a semitone. Apart, let's put this on a stave. So here's the D, and if you remember, D hangs on the stave like that, and then you go up to the next line, go up to the next space, go up to the next line. All right. I'm gonna put a little space here. I would need to put a sharp in front of that F sharp. Go up to the space. Four more needed. One, two, three, and finally to end on the D. We need sharps. We need a sharp to go in front of my F. And we need a sharp to go in front of my C sharp. So D major consists of two sharps, an F sharp, and a C sharp. Let's play the scale. Descend. Major scales with flats. So just like in the tetrachords, tetrachords that have sharps will only have sharps. It's the same thing with major scales. Major scales with flats will only have flats and major scales with sharps will only have sharps. And we just went through a few scales with sharps, so I want to do the same with our flat major scales. So the scale I'm going to work with right now is an F major scale. We're going to begin on the F.
gonna go up alpha order G A B put a little space to separate the tetrachord C D E and F and just like before we are going to work out if the first four letters do follow the formula for the tetrachord which is tone tone semitone so let's locate the F on the keyboard and F is just before three black keys and we need a tone here's a tone away from the f and that takes us to g so that's okay let's put a tick to show that's okay and we need a tone between the g and the a if we are following the formula and that is also okay and between the a we need to end up on this note here which is a semitone away so we can't interfere with these notes because they are already correct so you don't interfere with this but rather the b which it will be here should be here and if you lower it by a semitone we will get a b flat so let's make that a b flat so it will follow the formula b oops i like to use common letter b for flat there we go and now that's okay so We'll put a tick between that so the first part of our formula an f tetrachord has a b flat after a while this will just be committed to your memory f g a b flat and there we go with that familiar the re mi fa song of the tetrachord uh before we go to the second tetrachord and work out what this is let's see if the distance between the first tetrachord of the major scale in f is a tone apart so we are in b flat here we are it's all messy but i think you can see it and we need to get a tone which indeed is to c so here we are on the c tetrachord and you know what we do not even have to work out if this is correct because we learned in a previous video that C tetrachord has no sharps, no flats. So the second half of your F major scale will be C, D, E, F. Let's play the whole thing. Descending. We can now put this safely on the stave f i'm going to just duplicate it starting on the space f once you establish your f and you're not too familiar with the stave you can just go up with the pattern up to the next line up to the next space up to the next line all the way you're doing this eight times because your major scale has eight pitches So that look like the line is going through it uh, voila that's perfect seven and finally eight and we just worked out that it has a b flat in the f major scale so we're going to take this flat and put it in front of our well last note of the first tetrachord f major f major has one flat it has a b flat all right let's look at another scale that has flats in it another scale that has flats in it and i'm going to start with the b flat that's the flat the f major had let's start with the b flat b flat and then we go c as we follow in the alphabet d e f g a and i'm gonna put b flat here because the beginning and the starting note needs to be the same yeah let's work out the tetrachord let's work out if the formula between the first tetrachord if we have it fit in the tone tone semitone so let's start on the b flat and we need a tone between b flat and c here is a tone it does take us to the c so this is good between the c and the d 
we need a tone and that does happen we go up semitone semitone and this is good between the d and the e we have a tone and uh, that part of the form formula actually requires a semitone we should be here do not tamper with these first three letters, the B flat, C, and D, because we just worked it to be perfect. If you tamper it, it, it will mess up our scale. So we just go to the E and find out what happens if we made the E here and you simply put a flat. That's why it's called um, the flat scales, I guess. Um, E flat, voila. So the first part of my tetra chord has a B flat, C, D, E flat. Before we begin the second tetra chord, let's see if between the first tetra chord of the B flat major scale and the second is a tone apart. So here I am, I'm going to use a E flat. I'm going to use this lower E flat as it's not so And I need a tone away. A tone will take me here, followed by here, which is the F. So we do have the tone between here. And you know what? I do not have to work out my F tetrachord because on the previous slide, when we did the F scale, we worked out that the F tetrachord is F, G, A, B flat. And this B flat tetrachord ends with the F, G, A, B flat. So we do know that this is our tetrachord formula for an F. So a B flat major scale has two flats. Now, never mind you seeing a flat here and a flat here. That is the same note. B flat is B flat. So you wouldn't count it twice. You know, that's like running to the back of the line every, every time you want to get another plane a game. That much is the same person. So this is B flat and E flat. B flat major has these two flats, B flat and E flat. Let's put it on a stave to see what it looks like. So we have B, I'm gonna just put it here, and we're gonna make the scale C, D, E. Yeah, I like to put the notes in first before I put the flats or the accidentals in, F, G, all right, I'm all out of stave. I need to extend my stave. And what do we do to extend the stave? We put in ledger lines. So we put in a ledger line. A, and I'm going to draw my next ledger line because that, we only have six letters there. We need eight. So it means we'll have another note on our ledger line as well. So the A goes here on the line. And the B will go here, sitting on the line. So we need to put in our flats. You begin with B flat. I'm going to put that exactly so the line goes straight. And it also ends with a B flat. Remember that it begins and ends with the same note. And then we also need to put in our E flat, which is right here. So B flat major scale has two flats, a B flat and an E flat. Remember, you don't count this again because B flat is B flat. So it's just two flats, B's and E's. Let's play it. to start on the last note we flattened which was E flat so I'm going to use that as my starting pitch for the next demonstration stretch that out so all the letters of the alphabet could fit and we're gonna go E flat after E is F G A E, C, oops, C, D, and I must end on the same letter, so I'm going to put it in my E flat immediately one time. No sticking. All right, and 
we're going to quickly go through and see if we have a tetrachord here with the first four. E flat, I need a tone. A toner will take me here. F, that's correct. We'll take here. Between F and G, I need a tone. Here's G, that is correct. Between G and A, there's a tone. But we do know that that should be down here, a semitone. That A is too high. We need to lower it. We need to make it A flat. So here we go. A flat. Great. Now that is true and that is correct. Before we go to this tetrachord, we need to get a tone between A flat and the next tetrachord. So here I'm on A flat. And a tone away is actually here. That's B. We have to use the letter B, but it's not B. It's actually to the left of B. So our starting tetrachord will start with a B flat. All right. So the distance between the A and the B flat is now a tone. This is true and correct. And now we can work out this tetrachord. But you know what? I'm not going to work out this tetrachord. B flat, C, D, E flat. Isn't that familiar? I'm going to go to the previous slide where we just worked out the B flat scale. B flat, C, D, E flat. We already know that that is going to be a tetrachord because it's the same pitches. B flat, C, D, E flat. All right, so let's put it on the stave. E flat, and this first line is E flat. Well, E, F. G, A, then we need four more, so you go up to the next line, keep following this pattern, you can't go wrong if you're meticulous, there is very meticulous, C, D, and my eighth pitch, all the way up here, E flat, and I need three flats, well, four, but this scale only has three flats. The E flat in the beginning and the E flat all the way on the top here. Then we need to put a flat in front of the A, which is the fourth letter. One, two, three, four. So one, if you're not too sure if it's the A, watch what you just built. Count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This flat will go just in front of that fourth one. And B flat, well, which is the note after it has a B flat. So we're going to put the flat. Oops, duplicate the wrong thing. <laughs> and I continue with it. Delete that. I need to get my flat. Let's move that out of the way. It seems to be getting in the way, which is why I can't duplicate it. B flat, so I'm going to put it right here and put back my A. All right, so here we have what an E flat will look like. E flat has three flats. Remember, you don't count the first and the last twice. It's the same letter, E flat. And let's hear what it sounds like. Fantastic. 